Hi class, happy Choose Joy Thursday. Hopefully your week is going well and um, you're having lots of fun at home. You're enjoying doing the flip grids that Miss Harmon has gotten ready for you guys and enjoying the reading and working hard on your math. Um, today we're going to be reading our full text, learning about Earth's weather and climate. But before we start reading, excuse me, we're gonna go over our vocabulary words, okay? So our first vocab word is atmosphere. Now atmosphere, remember, is that um, that gas that surrounds the earth, okay? And it protects us from rays from space and different things coming from outer space. And um, it's essentially what we live in is our atmosphere. Our second vocab word is average. Average just means common or typical. So the example that we talked about was the average temper temperature in summer in Marietta is 100 degrees. So typically, on average, it's very hot here in Marietta. Our third vocab word is climate. Now remember, weather is ever-changing, so weather can always change, but, um, but climate is something that is the typical or the average weather of a place over a long period of time. So the rainforest is wet and hot, and the desert is hot and dry. So the weather may change in the rainforest or the um, desert, but the climate is typically always the same. Our fourth vocabulary word, I'm sorry, is the four, our both fourth vocabulary word is equator. So remember equator is the invisible line that divides the earth into two hemispheres. So it's a line that we can't see, but the scientists have used that to predict where the center of the earth is. The closer you are to the equator, the hotter climate that you live in. The further away you are from the equator, the colder climate that you live in. So North and South Pole are the coldest climates in the world because they're the furthest away from the equator. Our fifth vocabulary word, remember, is precipitation. Say it with me, precipitation. Right? Precipitation is any type of water that falls from the sky. So there are four types of precipitation. Water, hail, sleet, and snow. Okay? All those things fall, fall from the sky. They're all water falling from the sky, and those are all considered precipitation. And scientists can measure precipitation in a certain area by how much snow has fallen, how much rain has fallen, how much sleet has, like, you know, it, anything that falls from the sky, you can always measure that. And scientists do to get a typical climate or typical precipitation for a certain area. All right, my friends, so we're gonna turn forward a few pages here. So one, two, and three. And you should be on the full text. Okay, so remember the title of our passage today is Earth's Weather and Climate. So we're talking about Earth, and we're talking about weather and climate, and how weather is always changing, and climate is um, weather in a certain in a certain location over a long period of time, okay? So we'll go ahead and follow along as I'm reading aloud. Make sure you're highlighting your vocab words um, and highlighting any important things that you find in this reading. And then we're going to talk about the main idea and three supporting details of this main idea, okay? So Earth's weather and climate. Let me get some water. Okay, <clears throat> paragraph one. What is the weather like right now? Weather describes the atmosphere over a certain place at a given moment in time. Climate is different. Climate describes the average weather patterns of that place over long periods of time. Climate describes the average weather of the seasons. It also describes possible weather extremes like tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, or rainy periods. Weather can change from minute to minute, hour to hour, and day to day. Climate is determined by tracking a region's weather patterns for decades. So this passage is continuing to tell us what the difference between weather and climate is, right? And the, the other two readings that we had read before talked about those same details, but now it's telling us more. So climates also predict things like tornadoes, um, droughts, rainy periods, hurricanes, um, different parts of the world and different parts of the region have different climates. Like here in um, Southern California, we typically don't have snow, or in Marietta, we typically don't have snow or tornadoes or hurricanes. But if you go somewhere else, like 
Midwest, like Kansas City, they have tornadoes and they have these different things. Um, in Florida, they have hurricanes. So that is what climate helps predict. And it's important to know a climate of a certain area to make sure that you're prepared for any type of extreme weather that might be coming and to make sure that you, you are, can be safe in your house and be prepared for it. All right, guys, paragraph two. How do scientists track these weather patterns? Scientists measure different weather features. They measure air temperature, which is how hot or cold a place is. Remember, they use this to weather to measure temperature. They measure the amount of precipitation that falls from the sky as rain, snow, or sleet. They also measure other factors such as wind, humidity, and cloud cover. Scientists use different tools to measure these factors. They record their measurements and observations. Then they use this data to figure out the weather patterns of a region. Using this information, they can define the climate type. Paragraph 3. Some climates are hot and rainy, like the rainforest. Remember we talked about that yesterday? Regions closer to the equator get more direct sunlight, so they tend to be warmer. Places closer to water have more moisture, so they tend to get more rainfall. Each region has its own weather patterns. As a result, Earth has several different climate zones, tropical, dry, moderate, continental, and polar. Each climate has its own characteristics. Each climate also supports its own plant and animal life. Understanding a region's climate helps people predict what typical weather will be like, will be like, I'm sorry. Understanding a region's climate helps people predict what typical weather will be like throughout the year. So scientists use all this information of tracking weather to predict the climate of a certain area. And remember, climate tells us a lot of things. Climate tells us what weather we can expect somewhere, and climate tells us the type of animals that we're going to find in a certain region. There are different types of animals that live in different climates. Um, for example, in the desert, right, we have scorpions, we have snakes, we have camels, um, lots of different types of lizards. And this is because these animals are adapted to that hot and dry weather. And then if you think about a rainforest, there are different types of animals like monkeys or toucans or um, just all sorts of different animals live in the tropical rainforest and their bodies are adapted to the type of weather, the type of climate that is found in those regions. Okay, my friends. So let's read this last little tidbit, these two little things and the pictures. Scientists measure these factors over time to make weather predictions. They also use this data to define a region's climate. Two important factors that determine climate are air temperature and precipitation, right? So those are the two things, and we talked about that yesterday, remember? Tropical rainforest, hot and wet. Desert, hot, dry. Polar, cold and wet. So the temperature and the type, how much precipitation falls in that area determines um, these climates, okay? So here, my friends, we're gonna turn forward one page and it should just look just like this. Okay, my friends, the first thing we're gonna talk about is um, the main idea. So what is the main idea of this passage? And so remember, the main idea is the purpose of this passage. Why was this passage written? What type of information is, are, is being given to us? And what is it teaching us? And so go ahead and flip back. You can either go to the full text, the amplified text, the bridge text, take a minute to look at all the pictures, think about the things that we've learned, and what do you think the main idea is? Okay, remember the title is Earth's Weather and Climate, okay? Go ahead and pause the video, look back, and then come back. All right, so the main idea here is we can use daily weather to understand and predict climate, okay? So we use the daily weather patterns in order to say what a certain climate is for a certain region, okay? Now we're going to talk about the details. So go ahead and flip back to your book and then think about a detail that supports this main idea. Okay, class, so what is the first thing that you saw that scientists do in order to use this daily weather in order to predict certain climates, right? What do they measure? That's right, they measure temperature and precipitation. Make sure you guys pause the video and write that detail in your book, and then go ahead and flip back and think about a second supporting detail for our main idea. 
All right, so what is that second detail to support our main idea that we can use daily weather to understand and predict climate? Okay, so what's another detail that supports that? Good, we can use this information to see patterns in, wet, in weather. So what time, of the, what time, what season it has the most rain? What season has the most snow? Um, how many tornadoes have hit in a certain area? How many hurricanes have hit? In order to predict, use those weather patterns to predict the climate, it can help people people safe. It can educate people about the weather around them um, and really understand where they live and why it's important to pay attention to climates because certain regions in the world have certain climates and they need to stay that way. Like the polar ice caps need to stay polar because that's the type of wildlife and that functions out there and that lives out there. So it's really important to pay attention to um, changes in climate so a place that is typically really cold and really wet, if it starts becoming hot and dry, that's very concerning because then the animals there will not survive and it doesn't contribute to our ecosystem to help prosper and have more animals and um, have a balanced world. So that's why it's super important to pay attention to those things. All right, guys, go ahead and pause the video, write your detail, and then come back for your third detail. Make sure you flip back to your book, look at the pictures, read the words, and see what the third detail is, okay? All right, guys, and what is that third detail for our main idea, okay? Good, we can use this information to help predict average weather, typical common weather in a certain area, which is super important for us to know these things <clears throat> in order for us to survive, in order for animals to survive, and making sure that climate remains the same all over the world. All right, guys, once you have written down all your sentences, um, you guys are more than welcome with mom and dad to move forward and try to answer these three pictures right here with the pictures, um, number one, two, and three, and then go ahead and ask mom and dad to send me a picture of your completed work, okay? So I have created a um, part on our power school that is our beautiful work, and so when you guys log on that front page, you guys can see each other's beautiful work. I've actually posted a video as well, um, so just making sure that you guys are logging in and paying attention to those things, okay? And that is all for today. Um, make sure you do your comprehension check once you're all done with your video. And I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.